Hey, what's up my people? Kiwami Games here, back at it with another video for you guys. And before we jump into anything, I just want to say thank you all so much for a thousand subscribers, man. You guys are the realest and this is really coming from the bottom of my heart and my left kidney. Thank you all so much for this milestones. You all made it possible and I'm just very, very grateful to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. Thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate it. Now, this might be a little longer of an intro than usual, so I left some timestamps down below if you guys just want to jump into the replays. But I just want to mention a couple things before uh, we go into the replays. Now, one of the thing is that my previous video, I was running the Atlanteans, but more with an Ice Jade engine. And in this one, I wanted to try something a little different, a little new that I haven't messed around with. And this time, instead of running a lot of Ice Jade cards, I actually went with the uh, Mermel engine. And I gotta say, I'm really feeling these water archetypes. They're really fun. They're not super top tier. They're like really, really rogue decks, but they're really, really fun. So yeah, I just wanted to experiment with the Mermail and try something new. And the deck is a lot of fun. I think um, if you would like to just try something new and just to have fun, I think this deck is really, really great. Now, another thing, as you can see in my deck list, there is no Maxi. And I was running Maxi, but the problem was, one of the thing is that if my Maxi resolved, then my opponent would usually just set something and pass and then it would just leave me with an empty field and it was just like an easy win or they would take the challenge and then i would have like 20 30 cards in my hand which also would make it like an easy win and i just felt like i didn't have enough good interactive gameplays to show you i mean i thought it would just be boring if i show you a bunch of games that i won because of maxi so i decided to cripple myself a little bit and i removed the maxi and just become a giga chat and by removing Maxi, it allowed me to run more like archetype based cards. So that's the reason why no Maxi. But if you want to take this deck into like Master Rank or something like that, then I do suggest that you do run Maxi because the deck is going to need all the help and support that it can get because it is still kind of like a rogue tier deck and it can struggle going second a lot. So, yep, that's that. And um, without further ado, yeah, I was also experimenting with a lot of like synchros and stuff like that. So I will get into it at the end of the video. So stick around to the end so that I can check out the uh, deck list and I will go into the monsters and all of that. But very briefly, what the deck is trying to do going first, what is really one trying to do is firstly is trying to rip at least three cards from your opponent's hand. And the way that we go about doing that is using the minstrel. So this card right here when it sends itself and another water monster to the graveyard you can look at your opponent's hand and then you can banish one card from their hand face up but then this card it gets returned to their hand at the end of the turn and then the other way that you're going to rip cards out of their hand is going to be with the molding glacier so with the molding glacier if you have five water monsters in your graveyard you can special summon this card and then you can discard two random cards from your opponent's hand so that right there kind of cripples your opponent by removing three cards from their hand and then after that you're going to then make your strong synchro plays and then the way you go about doing that is with the deep sea diva this is arguably going to be your best uh, starter so with the deep sea diva you're going to normal summon it and then you're either going to special summon the neptopus or you're going to special summon the guitar depending on what you want to do if you go with the guitar then the guitar has a special effect that it's going to banish um, cards from the opponent's deck based on the number of water monsters that you control. So that can also help cripple your opponents a little bit. Sometimes you might banish important cards that they need. And then if you go with the Atlantean Prince, then this is going to allow you to kind of go the mill route. So with the Atlantean Prince, you're going to send a Dragoon to the graveyard. And then the Dragoon is going to add another Dragoon. And then with the Prince, you're going to add the Minstrel. And then when you send the Minstrel and the Dragoons, the Dragoon is now once per turn. So then you're going to be able to add the Moulin Glacier with the second Dragoons. And then that's how you kind of get all these water monsters into the deck. So, yep, that's that. And then I was running Super Poly just because, as I mentioned, going second, the deck can struggle a little bit. So I really wanted to have some sort of board breaker. Um, another thing that I was experimenting with was with Tidal. So Tidal actually came in clutch a lot. Um, and then I was running the uh, baby title. So this kind of serves as an extender. And as we can see, we are running a lot of level seven. So that's really, really important to kind of get 
as many level 7 monsters as we can because our big boss monster requires two level 7 water monsters but um yeah so that's the gist of the deck you want to hand rip your opponent and then after you hand rip them you want to go and make your strong synchro plays and then if you can you can make this uh level 7 xc monster and this card is really amazing because he has the effect that while this face-up card has material, level 5 or higher monsters cannot attack. And then also you can, during your either player's turn, you can detach one XC material from this card, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent and current controls that have less attack than this card. So this right here can really shut down a lot of decks by not allowing them to activate and then by not allowing them to attack. So it's a really, really great um, card and the deck is really, really fun. So without further ado, let's just jump into the replays and stick to the end as I'll go over each card in the uh, deck list. So yep, let's jump right into it. All right, my people. So in this replay, we are going to go against uh, Mechanical, if I remember correctly. All right, so we're going to go second. Okay, so he's going to normal summon the hero. Hero's going to send the Arc Light. Arc Light is going to search for the Ohime. Alright, and then the Ohim is going to activate, getting himself the Water of Arabesque. Okay, and in this replay, I'm going to show you what's like a really crazy board that you can do with this deck. Alright, so we're just going to fast forward this a little bit. I mean, he's not going to do much. You know, he's just going to set up his um, unaffected Huli and he's going to set the trap card, but it's all good. Alright, so we draw into Ron. So first we're going to start with the Mermail Abyss Teus. So Teus can discard one water monster you control. And then you can special summon this card. And then you can add a level 4 or lower Mermail monster from your deck to your hand. So we're going to send the Dragoon to the graveyard. Dragoon is going to activate. Teus is going to activate. Okay, so with the Teus we're going to add the Gun. And then the Dragoon is going to add me my Deep Sea Diva, which is our best starter. And I'm going to activate the Teyas again because this is not a once per turn card. And then this time I'm going to send the gun to the graveyard. And then I'm going to special summon the Teyas. Now I can normal summon my DC Diva. With the Diva I'm going to special summon the guitar. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4 water monsters. So that means I can banish 4 cards from the top of his deck. Alright and then we banish Super Poly. We banish another Hu Li, a Maxi and another Arabesque. So that's looking really good for us. And then here I'm going to target the uh, Deep Sea Diva, making it a level 4, so that we can go into our level 7 Prima Donna. Okay, then now the Prima Donna has to return a banished card to our opponent's hand, so that we can special summon a level 4 or lower water monster from our deck. So we're going to return the Huli, and then we're going to special summon the Atlantean Prince. So now we can activate the Atlantean Prince. We're going to send the Dragoon to the graveyard. And then the Dragoon is going to add a second Dragoon. I mean, I'm sorry. The Prince is going to add the second Dragoon. And then the Dragoon from the graveyard is going to add the Minstrel. So now with the Minstrel, we can discard the Minstrel and the other Dragoon. And then we're going to be able to look at our opponent's hand. And then we can banish one card from his hand face up until the end of our turn. Okay, so we discard the Minstrel and the Dragoon. Look at his hand. Okay, and he has Nibiru, so I'm going to banish Nibiru. Okay, so then now the Dragoon is going to add me the infantry. Okay, and now with the Deep Sea, the Madonna, and the uh, Atlantean Prince, we're going to go into Drag Guide. So Drag Guide is pretty much a spell, a trap card negate, as long as we have water monsters in our graveyard, and our deck is nothing but water, so we're good. And then now the Atlantean Prince, I mean, I'm sorry, now the Prima Donna, when this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target a banished card. It could be either your banished cards or your opponent's banished cards. And then you can shuffle it into the deck. So I'm going to shuffle back the Nibiru because I don't want him to get it back to his hand at the end of the turn. Also, just in case if he ends up like drawing into the Nibiru again, that's like another brick that we're putting back in the deck. Alright, and then now with the two level 7 Mermail monsters, we can go into our boss monster. It's really sucks bro that this card doesn't have an animation like Konami bro. I know this deck is rogue and nobody really plays it a whole lot but show some love, show some love bro. Alright now he's gonna try to activate his rivalry but we're gonna get it with the uh, drag guy. Negate that, get that out of here. Okay now we're gonna attach the um, Mizuchi, we're gonna attach it to the Abyss Gaius. 
and then the Mizuchi pretty much is gonna negate any spell cards that activate so this can negate Dark Ruler no more this can negate Super Poly this can negate just about any spell card all right and then now with the Ron we're gonna spend the infantry to the graveyard and then here I am going to chain the Mermail to it because this boss monster has an effect that you during either turn you can detach one card from this uh, card and then negate the effects of all face up monsters the opponent controls so we're going to negate the huli so that it, the water of arabesque can be targeted but here i kind of misclicked so with the infantry it has a second effect so when this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster you can target a face up card your opponent controls and you can destroy it and i targeted the huli because i thought since it was negated it can be destroyed but i forgot about the water arabesque the equip monster cannot be destroyed by card effects so i should have popped the water of arabesque instead of trying to pop the huli so that was like a misplay on me but it's all good it doesn't matter we can still get rid of the arabesque okay so with the uh, ice j token and the ice j run we're gonna go into chain ring all right and then now i'm gonna banish the guitar so the guitar you can banish this card from your graveyard and then one water monster on the field gains 100 attack for each currently banished monster and since the monster was banished that's going to trigger the chang ying so now with the chang ying we can banish his uh, water of arabesque and we can banish his rivalry and then now we can smack that belly dancer <laughs> and my opponent's going to scoop bro if i would have smacked that belly dancer she would have gone from a belly dancer to a head bopper bro because <laughs> that smack across the head was going to hurt shorty for sure but anyways, bro, that's like one of like the craziest boards that I was able to make with this deck. All right, my people, in this replay, we are going to go up against Snake Eyes. All right, we're going to go second. And once again, we have no hand traps, so my man can just do whatever he wants. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. He's going to do, you know, his usual stuff. Got the pop lock, got the field spell. Got the Flame Burst, got the Mascarina, Flame Burst is going to recycle his monsters, he's going to get back the Oak, he's going to get back the Poplar, get back the Ash, Poplar is going to go into the Link Rebo. then with the Ash and the Link Rebo, he's going to now go into the Promethean Princess, Princess is going to bring back the Flame Burst, Flame Burst is going to put the Mascarina in the back row, he's going to go into the Wolf, then he's going to activate the Bonfire, getting the Birch, but here, uh, okay, I was going to say, well, I don't know why he put the wolf and nothing so that he can draw a card, but there, there it is right here. So now he can draw a card. Okay, then he's going to go into the Heat Soul. Heat Soul is going to draw him a card by paying a thousand life points. All right, let's see what can we do here. So first things first, I'm going to activate the Minstrel. And with the Minstrel, I am going to discard the Heavy Infantry. And then the Heavy Infantry is going to, because I use... I discarded the heavy infantry to activate a water monster then I can target one face up card my opponent controls and the face up card I am going to get rid of is that field spell okay, then he's going to activate the heat soul he's going to draw one card and then I also banish the effect veiler all right so now with the field spell gone he has no way of like getting the mascarina on the field because I don't know why he didn't leave the flame brush on the field but that's what happens with Snake Eyes players, bro, you know? They just think they can just play the best deck in the game and it's going to auto-win everything. Alright, so now my um, Atlantean Prince, since it was sent to the graveyard to activate a Water Monster's effect, I can target an Atlantean monster in my graveyard and I can special summon it. Alright, and then the Abyss Miguelo is going to search for me for an Abyss Spell of Trap card, but he's got another effect barrier, so he's going to negate it. Alright, so now we bring back the Infantry. That's going to trigger the uh, Promethean Princess to pop my Infantry. Okay, and now we normal summon our Diva, and he's going to call it quits. We baited out all of the negates, bro. That's all I was trying to do, just bait out all the negates. So that when that deep sea diva hits that field, we make sure that we put a stamp and seal and send him out of here. Alright my people, so in this replay, we are going to go up against Rescue Age. Alright, so our hand is 
pretty okay. Unfortunately, we drew kind of our bricks. So the guitar is kind of a brick because you want to special summon it off the diva. And the Lapis Dragon is kind of a brick because you want to add this card to the hand because when it's added to the hand or if you draw into it, it can special summon itself onto the field. But let's see what we can do. Okay, so we're going to normal summon our Prince. Prince is going to send the Dragoons. He's going to activate his Impulse. All right, so now with the Impulse, he's going to be able to special summon the Preventer. All right, so then we're going to add a second Dragoon. And then with the Dragoon's effect, we're going to add the Deep Sea Minstrel. So now we're going to send the Minstrel and the Dragoons to the Graveyard. And then now we can look at our opponent's hand. So he has Original Sinful Spoil, Emergency, Preventer, and Hydrant. So from here, we're going to be able to banish one of these cards face up until the end of the turn. So we're going to banish his Preventer. And then ideally, you want to banish whatever you don't mind that they get back to the hand. Because when we special summon Molly Glacier, that means we're going to send two of these cards to the graveyard. So you want to keep whatever card you want them to send to the graveyard. You want to keep it in your hand so that we can mill it. And then whatever card you don't want them, you don't mind them getting back to the hand, then you want to banish it. So sometimes I will banish like a hand trap or I will banish any like a brick or something like that so that they can get it back at the end of the uh, end phase. Okay. <clears throat> So here we're going to go for our Abyss Megello. So this card can special summon itself by discarding two other water monsters. So we're going to discard the Lapis and the Guitar. Alright, and then this card is going to allow you to search for your uh, Mermel uh, Equip spell. And now this card right here is pretty much kind of like the Equip spell for Infernoble Knights, the Angelica. So when a spell effect is activated, um, this is going to negate it. So this pretty much right here is going to negate like super polymerization. It can negate stuff like that. And then now because we have five water monsters in our graveyard, we can special summon the Mulling Glacier. So now the Mulling Glacier is going to discard two. So we discard the Hydrant and we discard the Emergency. Okay, and now we're going to go into Link Rebo. Okay, and then we're going to check Imperm and we're going to attach the uh, Equip Spell to our Mermail Monster. And then he's going to get his Preventer back to his hand. So now we know what he has in his hand. He has original Sinful Spoils and the Preventer. So he's going to activate those Sinful Spoils. Alright, but my spell card is going to automatically negate it. And then he's just going to call it quit. Alright, and then that's how you put out the fire and rescue Ace. All right, my people. So in this replay, I'm going to show you a little something something that you can do with uh, Prima Donna. Okay, so he's going to shotgun the Maxi, but we got the Ash Blossom, so it's all good. Okay, so here we're going to normal summon the Diva. Okay, and then the Diva is going to special summon the Guitar. Okay, so normal summon Diva, special summon Guitar. Guitar is going to banish two cards. Here we banish the Sinful Spoil and the Diabell Star. Okay, so now I'm going to target the uh, Diva, make it a level 4, so that we can go to our level 7 Prima Donna. Alright, and then now the Prima Donna, he has to give one of our banished, one of my opponent's banished cards to his hand. And then that's going to allow us to uh, special summon a level 4 lower water monster from our deck. So I'm going to give him back the Sinful Spoil of Betrayal. And then we're going to special summon our Prince. Okay, so now the Prince is going to send the Dragoons to the Graveyard. Alright, and then we're going to add a second Dragoon. And then the Dragoons from the Graveyard is going to add me my Minstrel. So now I'm going to send the Minstrel and the Dragoons to the Graveyard so that we can look at his hand. And then here we have Castillo Ogre, Super Poly, and Drowning Mirror Force, and all of that. So because we have Prima Donna on the field, what you can do is you can banish a card that you want to return to his deck. So in this case, I'm going to banish the Super Poly because the Super Poly can be very, very problematic. And then if I don't end up milling the Super Poly to the Graveyard, then that's like really really bad for me so instead I'm gonna banish it and instead of returning it to the hand at the end of the phase I'm gonna ba uh, bounce it back to the deck so first I'm gonna add the Mulling Glacier with the Dragoons then because I have five water monster in the graveyard I can special summon the Mulling Glacier and now the Mulling Glacier is gonna discard two cards from my opponent's hand so we discard the Kashtira Ogre and we discard we discard the uh, Drowning Mirror Force so now with the Prima Donna and the Prince, we're going to go into our Axel, and then Axel is going to bring back our Deep Sea Diva, and then here we can activate Prima Donna's second effect. So if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one banished card, and it can be your banished card or your opponent's banished card. 
and then you can shuffle it into the deck. So here I'm going to shuffle back the Super Poly because the Minstrel has an effect that you can banish one card but you have to return that card at the end of the face and then I don't want to return Super Poly so I'm just going to spin it back into the deck. Okay, and then now we can special summon our level 2 tuna. Alright, and then now with the Axel and our level 2 tuna, we're gonna go into the on the floor. And then that's all we wrote. So now we know he has two bricks in his hand, so he cannot really do much. And then it's Cash Thera. Cash Thera can be a little bricky, so I guess he drew into another brick, and that's how we put an end to it. Crazy. <laughs> All right, my people, in this replay, we are going to go up against Adventure Nemleria. Okay, and we're going to go second. Okay, so my opponent is going to activate the Dreaming Nemleria. He's going to set down the Dream Tower. Dream Tower is going to banish two cards so that he can try to special summon a monster. So I'm going to hit it with the Maxi. Oh, no, I think it's going to add, right? Yeah, yeah, you can add two level 10 monsters. Okay, so I'm, you have to Ash that. Okay, then he's going to banish some couple cards from his extra deck so that he can special summon this card right here. Okay, now we have the baby title. So the, the title right here, you can discard this card and one other dragon or water monster and then you can special summon title from your graveyard. So I'm going to discard the heavy infantry and we can special summon title. And then now the heavy infantry because it was discarded to activate a water monster's effect, I can pop a card on the field that's face up. So we're going to pop his uh, spell card. Now we're going to normal summon the prince. The prince is going to send the dragoons, but he's going to imper my drag my prince. But it's all good. The dragoon graveyard effect is still going to activate, so I can add a card to my hand. So we're going to add Mullen Glacier. All right, and then now with the prince and the title, we're going to go into Coral Anemone because I want to get five cards, five water monsters in my graveyard so that I can special summon the Mullen Glacier. So now with the Mullen Glacier, we can discard the two cards that he has on his hand. Alright, and then our Coral Anemone, we're going to bring back our Prince. And then with the title, we're going to banish two cards so that we can special summon it. Alright, and then now we can smack him around. Okay, and now we're going to set Call by the Grave and we're going to pass turn. Alright, and then he's going to activate... The Nemleria, and this was like a, I don't know what I was thinking, because, <laughs> so he said this right here, this is, because this is in the Pendulum Scale, it's considered to be, I guess, like a spell card, so I thought that if I call by the grave, this right here, it was going to negate it, but it's not negated, because it's not considered to be a monster right now, it's considered to be a spell card, so I definitely should have saved my call by the grave, it was definitely a misplay on my part. But that's how you learn, right? You make mistakes and you learn from it. All right, so now he's going to be able to activate its effect. He's going to get back his Dreaming Tower. He's going to banish two. But we still got our Ash Blossom, so we're going to be able to negate that. Ash Blossom coming in clutch right here. All right, then this card right here is going to banish three, so he can special summon itself. All right, then he's going to smack my Coral Anemone. All right, and then now with the title, we have to um, send it back to the hand. It has another effect that when it is special summon, you gotta kind of bring it back to your hand, but it's all good. Okay, so with the Prince, we're gonna send the Dragoons to the graveyard, add a second Dragoon. Dragoon is gonna add our DC Diva. We're gonna normal summon our Diva, special summon the guitar, banish four cards from his deck. Then we're gonna target the guitar, making it a level six, so we can go into our level eight. Go into our Axel Stardust Dragon. Stardust Dragon is going to bring back our level 2 tuner. Level 8, level 2, we're going to make Baron the Floor. Alright, and then now we're going to discard these two water monsters. We're going to special summon the, um, the Mermo, and then the Mermo is going to activate and search for my Mizuchi, and then I'm going to have a spell uh, negate, plus the Baron the Floor Omni negate. It was just over for my homie. <laughs> crazy crazy but this is like when the deck pops off bro the deck is really really amazing all right ladies and gentlemen so in this replay we are gonna go up against runic stun all right and we're gonna go second 
Okay, so he's going to activate the um, card of destruction. I'm going to ash that because at first I thought maybe it was going to be like a dark world play or something like that because usually they're the ones who want to discard cards from their hand to the graveyard. So I ash that. Okay, but now it turns out to be runic. Okay, so now he's going to get his Huggin. Huggin is going to activate, sending the Ash Blossom, searching for the Fountain. Okay, then he's going to activate the Fountain. And then he's going to set one to pass. Alright. Okay, so now we're going to negate the Huggin, just so that he, the Huggin cannot protect um, the Fountain. Because now I have the Infantry. So the Infantry has a good effect. Um, so this card right here, when this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, you can target one face-up card your opponent controls, and then you can destroy it. So now with the run, I can send a water monster to the graveyard, and then I can special summon the run and a token. So now I can pop his fountain, and then I can get my run and my token. Alright, then he's going to activate Flash and Fire. So Flash and Fire is going to destroy my run. And he's going to banish three, two cards. So he's banished my Minstro and my Lapis. Okay, so now we no more summon our infantry. And we're going to go into our Coral Anemone. Okay, then Coral Anemone is going to bring back the Ron. Because the Ron has 1500 attack or less. Okay, and then we're going to attack him. The Huggin is going to send herself back to the grid, to the extra deck. Alright, but we're looking okay because he only has one card and one card in his hand. Okay, then he's gonna set. Alright, and then we draw into our starter. So we normally summon the diva, so just summon the guitar. And now we have one, two, three, four water monsters. So we're gonna be able to banish four cards from the top of his deck. And then now with the guitar and the run, we're gonna make Baron on the floor. Alright, then Baron on the floor is gonna pop one of his back rows. Okay, and then I'm gonna activate the Coral Anemone, bring back the guitar. So now I'm going to activate Guitar's second effect, which is going to allow you to manipulate the levels. So you can target one card that you control, and then you're going to pretty much double them. So if I target my guitar, it's going to become a level 6, so then I can make a level 8 Synchro. And if I target my Deep Sea Diva, it's going to become a level 4, so then I can make my level 7 Synchro Monsters. But in this case, I'm going to target the guitar, so I can go into my level 8, which is going to be my Drag Eye. And then the drag guy has an effect that whenever my opponent activates a spell or trap card, then we can just negate it because we have water monsters in our graveyard. And that's how you put an end to runic. Alright my people, so in this replay we are going to go up against Plunder Patrol. Which is a deck that I don't see a whole lot in ranked, so I'll be honest, like... I, I don't know if I activated my hand traps at the great moment because I don't know this deck too well since I don't play against it a whole lot but anyways here he's going to activate the Jord and I decide to imprim it um, because this right here is what's going to allow him to add a card to his hand and then I don't know I don't want him to get like any extenders or anything like that but um anyway so he's going to activate the golden hair this card into special summon itself okay now with the golden hair and the Jord he's going to go into the black beard and this dude right here, bro, he looks like my homie from the Bronx, man. The way he's just posted up like that with his arms crossed and everything. Like, what's good? He's like, what's good, bro? What's good? All right. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward this a little bit because, like, as I mentioned, I'm not too familiar with Plunder Patrol. But anyway, so back to us. And then here, as you can see, I was running like Maxi, as I mentioned, but I decided to cut it because it just never really resolved for me. So... Here I'm just gonna normal summon my Atlantean Prince. I'm gonna send the Dragoons to the graveyard and I'm gonna search for my infantry. And then the Dragoon is gonna search for my Minstrel. So now the Minstrel is gonna send the um, infantry to the, I mean, no, I'm gonna send the Dragoons to the graveyard. So now I can look at his hand and I can banish his card. Okay, then the Dragoon is gonna send or search for my uh, Mermail Abyss Miguelo. So with the Abyss Miguelo, I'm gonna send the infantry and the Lapis Dragon to the graveyard. And then the infantry, because I sent it to activate a water monster's effect, I can now pop a card on the field. So I'm going to pop his big homie right here. Okay, then he's going to activate the big homie. I'm going to hit him with the max seat. But it's nothing because he's going to tr um, chain into the max seat. So he's going to special summon just one monster before my max seat resolves. So I don't really get to draw anything. 
Okay, so then now I search for our equip spell. Okay, so now I gotta activate Pot of Avarice. I'm gonna recycle my monsters from the graveyard so that I can draw two. Alright, then we're gonna attach. And then now the uh, Mermail Abysmail Abysmagalo has a, another effect that you can tribute one other attack position water monster and then this card can attack twice. Okay, so I'm going to tribute the Atlantean Prince and then the Atlantean Prince has another effect but it didn't resolve but when this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect you can target an Atlantean monster in your graveyard and then you can special summon it. So this is a good way to kind of special summon your Dragoons from the graveyard. Alright, so now we're gonna smack him and we're gonna smack him all right, and then we're gonna say call by the grave and we're gonna pass turn. All right, and then he gets to get his white beard back at the end of the phase. All right, and then he's gonna activate his field spell, but my spell card is gonna negate the field spell. Then he's gonna activate the monster in the graveyard, but we got called by the grave. So we're gonna negate that. I'm gonna call my homie Ramon at the mortuary. Yo, I'm gonna send a body your way. Come pick it up. Alright, and we put a stop, so it's back to us. Okay, so now we normally summon the, the pike. The pike is going to send the dragoons to the graveyard, and I'm going to search for the gun. Then the dragoon is going to search for me for my lapis, and now the lapis can special summon itself because it was added to our hand. And then now with these two monsters, we're going to go into our coral anemone. Okay, then Coral Nemini is going to bring back my Atlantean Prince, and then the Prince is going to send the Dragoons again, so that we can recycle everything that we just did turn one. So we get the Minstrel, then the Minstrel is going to send the Dragoon, and it's up for the graveyard. We're going to banish that card from his hand, just in case if it's like a Nibiru or something like that. Then we're going to search for Moulin Glacier. Okay, then we're again, we're going to um, send the Atlantean Prince to the graveyard, so that this card can attack twice. And now this time, because I have an Atlantean monster in our graveyard, I can special summon it. And then now we have way more than lethal. So we can attack twice. Attack. And attack. And that's how you can OTK with this deck. Alright my people, in this replay we are going to go up against the almighty, the unstoppable, the one and only Snake Eyes. Alright, we got a put that fire out so we're gonna activate our mermail we're gonna send the baby title to the graveyard so that we can special summon it it and then he's gonna hit me with the maxi but we got ramon hit him up bro you got another body i need you to come and pick up negate that cockroach okay so we special summon the mermail mermail's gonna add me nothing because my man is persistent he's got ash blossom too shit all right, all right, I see you, player, I see you. So all we can do is just set infinite of permanence and pass. Okay, he's got the bonfire. Bonfire is going to search for the ash. Okay, so he's going to normal summon the ash, activate the ash, but I got that infinite permanence. Put a stop to that. All right, okay, now he's going to go into Link Aribo. Okay, and then he's just gonna pass. All right, all right, back to us. Okay, we draw into our starter. Okay, we're gonna normal summon the diva, and my man has got a second maxi, bro. I swear, bro, this is another reason why I stopped playing maxi, man, because the maxi, it, it really cost me more games than it ever wins me any games, bro. <laughs> Anyways, let's cook we're under that maxi, whatever. We're gonna special summon our prince. Prince is gonna send the dragoons to the graveyard, searching for a second dragoon searching for our minstrel then we're going to send the dragoon and the minstrel to the graveyard we're going to look at his hand he's got nibiru he's got infinite permanence we're going to banish that nibiru all right then the dragoon is going to search me for my moulin glacier okay then with the prince we're going to go into a link Aribo so that we can get five water monsters in our graveyard so now with five water monsters we can special summon our moulin glacier he's going to hit me with effect veiler Man is going in right now, bro, with the hand traps. All right. Okay, so we're gonna crash Link Haribo into Link Haribo. All right, and then that's all we can do for now. Okay, so he gets to bring back the Nibiru back to his hand. 
All right, let's see what he got. He got nothing. He got nothing but bricks. That's what he got, bro. That's what you get for playing all those hand traps and all those bricks, bro. You're not a geek of chat like me. I don't need Max C. You see that? You see that shit, bro? All right, my people. In this replay, we are going to go up against Tillman's Labyrinth. Or Labyrinth Tillman. I don't know. Just some crazy shit. All right, so he's going to activate the Aria. Aria is going to set the Needle Bug Nest. So now he's going to be able to mill five cards from the top of his deck. And he's going to normal summon the Supreme Mayor. The Mayor is going to send the Hoffness to the graveyard. Hoffness is going to activate. Fusion Summon into our Kikolo. All right, then the Kikolo is going to activate. He's going to search for the Tillerman Castillo. All right, then the Sharon is going to special summon itself. Send the Tillerman Castillo to the graveyard. Melon 3. Then the... Tillerman Castillo is going to activate, going to be able to mill some more cards. Then the Scream is going to add the Meta Noise to the hand. Okay, so he mills Transaction Rollback and he mills Rhino Heart. Okay, so he's going to Special Summon the Rhino Heart. Kit Kalos is going to mill another 5 cards. Typical, typical Tillerman stuff. His graveyard is active right now, bro. He's having one hell of a party in that graveyard right now, though. Alright, so now with the Sharon and the Piccolo, he's gonna go into the Wukalo. Okay, then he's gonna mill two more cards. So now he's got the Chandelier in the graveyard. He's got Transaction Rollback in the graveyard. He's gonna go into Country Vadua right now. I mean, I don't know, bro. You cannot. He had the liberty to do whatever the hell he wanted because I had no hand traps, nothing in sight. Alright, he's gonna steal my Ash Blossom. Okay, so we're gonna activate the Teus. We're gonna send the guitar to the graveyard. The Rule Kalos is going to activate, it's going to negate my Teus. Alright, and then the Rule Kalos is going to special summon itself back onto the field. I'm going to activate Triple Tactics Talent. He's going to activate the um, Time Thief with Doer. Alright, but I'm going to steal his Rule Kalos. So now I have a special summon and negate. He's going to activate Sharon. I'm going to negate it with his own monster. Haha! -ha! Turn the tables on you. All right, now I'm gonna send the gun to the graveyard so that I can special summon the Ron Agrin. He's gonna activate transaction rollback, copy in the needle bug nest so that he can mill five more cards. He's gonna try to trigger some fusion summoning, but I guess he milled nothing. Okay, now the gun is gonna be able to recycle back my mermail, but he's got the shuffler, so he's gonna shuffle back my cards. Alright, so now with the Ron and the token, I'm gonna go into our level 10. You already know. Bring that shorty out here. And he's gonna call it quits because if he activates anything in the graveyard, like one of his um, girls to uh, fusion summon or whatever, like I can just banish it with the gamer. And if he just tries to do anything, it's just gonna get banished. I still got his Rukalos. But anyways, yeah, <laughs> I mean, my opponent, yo, he had the liberty to do whatever he wanted. I had no hand traps and he milled like half of his deck. Still not enough, bro. Let's get it. All right, my people, in this replay, we are going to go up against a Tillerman stun kind of deck, if I remember correctly. Okay, we're going to go second. Okay, so he's going to normal summon the Barry statue. So... Yeah, this replay, I just thought it was hilarious, you know, because we're, we're playing like a Castira uh, Tillerman stun deck, and he's going to sum, uh, normal summon the water torrent, not knowing that we are nothing but water. So I just thought this was just hilarious. Okay, so I'm going to activate one for one, sending my uh, Minstrel to the graveyard. He's going to, I mean, my Mermel to the graveyard. He's going to hit me with the Ash Blossom. That's all good. I, I was just trying to bait any hand traps. Okay, so now my Mermel has an effect. You can discard one other water monster to the graveyard, then you can special summon this card from your hand. And then you can add a level 4 lower mermaid monster from your deck to your hand. Alright, so now we're going to add the Abyss Gunde. And then the Gunde, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, has an effect that if this card is discarded to the graveyard, um, you can target one mermaid monster in your graveyard, and then you can special summon it. Okay, so with the Ron, we're going to send that to the graveyard, special summon the Ron get our token then we're going to activate her effect bring back the mermel that we discarded okay now with the ron and the token we're going to go into our level 10 agent and 
then with our two level 7 monsters, we will be able to go into our level 7 um, boss monster. Alright, so we single summon into our Abyss Gale. So, <laughs> I just thought this was just hilarious, bro, because he's over here thinking, you know, oh, I'm just going to set this water barrier statue here and it's going to screw up my opponent. All right, my people, welcome to the deck list portion of the video. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for sticking around with me. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoyed today's video, why not consider dropping a like, hit that subscribe button and share the video with any other water archetype enjoyer. I would really, really, really greatly appreciate it. Thank you all so much. So without further ado, let's jump right into the deck list. Okay, so to start things off, we have three Atlantean prints. This is going to be arguably like your second best starter. So you can send one Atlantean monster from your deck to the graveyard, except for the Atlantean Prince. And then you can add an Atlantean card from your deck to your hand. So oftentimes you're going to send a Dragoon to the graveyard, and then you're going to add another Dragoon from your uh, deck to your hand. And then with the Dragoon that you send to the graveyard, you're going to add your Minstrel. And then the Minstrel is going to discard the other Dragoon that you added so that you can look at your opponent's hand. And then you can banish one card from their hand face up. But remember, the card that you banish, they get it at the end of the end phase. So just be careful with how you strategize that. Alright, and then we have three Deep Sea Diva. So this is going to be your best starter. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon a level 3 or lower Sea Serpent monster from your deck. So you're either going to special summon the Atlantean Prince so that you can go into your ripping strategy or you're going to special summon the guitar so that you can banish cards from your opponent's hand and then depending on what you want to do you can then go into your level 8 synchros or you can go into your level 7 synchros and then the prima donna if you go prima donna then you can target one of your opponent's banished card add it to the hand and then you can special summon a level 4 or lower water monster from your deck so a lot of times you can also special summon the prince that way and then you can go and hand rip your opponent also with the um, prima donna so there's just different ways that you can kind of go about what you want to do all right then we have two atlantean heavy infantry so the first effect of this card is that it pretty much gives you two normal summon when this card is uh, summoned you can normal summon one level four or lower sea serpent type monster in addition to your normal summon set and then the second effect is that when this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, you can target a face-up card your opponent controls and then you can destroy it. Alright, and then we have one Mermail Abyss Gundy, Gundy, not sure how you pronounce that one. But if this card is discarded to the graveyard, then you can target a Mermail monster in your graveyard and then you can special summon it. So this kind of works as an extender just, just to get your Mermail monsters back onto the field so that you can go into your synchros or your exit plays. And then we have three Ash Blossoms for the Max Seas. Okay, then we have the Deep Sea Minstrel. So this card right here, you can discard it and another Water Monster. You're going to look at your opponent's hand and then you can banish one card from their hand. And then we got the Ghost Mourner. I was running two of this. You can definitely bump this up to two if you want. Or if you want to replace it with like Effect Veiler or any hand trap that you see most efficient with. Like a draw, anything that you want. This pretty much is a flex spot. You can run whatever hand trap you want. Okay, then we have the guitar. The guitar, when it is special summoned, you can banish cards from your opponent's deck based on the number of water monsters that you control. And then you can target a level 4 or lower water monster, and then you can increase its level by its original level. So this is going to allow you to just level manipulate itself or the Deep Sea Diva. If you make it a level 6, then with the level 6 and the level 2, you're going to go into your level 8 synchro monsters. And if you make the level 2 Diva a level 4, then you're going to go into your level 7 Prima Donna. Alright, then the Atlantean Prince. This card is now once per turn. When it is sent to the graveyard, you can add a sea, serpent, a sea Serpent monster from your deck to your hand. So really, really great, great card. Must have. Then we have one Abyss Pike. When this card is normal special summon, you can discard one water monster to the graveyard. And then you can add a level 3 or a level 3 monster from your deck to your hand. So usually this card is going to search you your Abyss Gundy in most cases. Okay, then we run the Stream Dragon Rule of the Droplets. We run one of this cards just so that we can special summon title from our deck to our hand. So it just serves as an extender and sometimes it can bait out like uh, any hand traps or anything like that as well. And then we have a Lapis. This is like 
lapis and maybe the guitar are kind of like the only bricks that we have because this card when it is added from the deck to your hand or during your draw phase if you draw into it you're going to be able to special summon it so it's an, ex an extender and it's also a level 5 tuner so this card plus your Atlantean Prince is what's going to allow you to go into like your Coral Dragon. So you never want to open up with this card. You want to either draw into it or you want to sort of search it. All right. And then we have two Mermail Abyss Megalow, Abyss Megalo. So this card, you're going to be able to discard two other water monsters to the graveyard. And then you can special summon this card from your hand. And then when it is special summoned this way, you can add one Abyss Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. And then you can tribute one other attack position water monster you control. And then this card can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. So this card sometimes can help you close out games. It can help you OTK. All right. And then we have three Mermail Abyss Teus. This card is really, really amazing. It's arguably like maybe your third best card to open up with. So you can discard one other water monster to the graveyard, special summon this card from your hand, and then you can add a level four lower mermaid monster from your deck to your hand. So you wanna open up with this card and a Dragoon, and then if you do, you kinda have like full power because with the Dragoon, you're gonna be able to search out the Deep Sea Diva, and then you're gonna normal summon the Deep Sea Diva, and then you're just gonna pop off from there. All right, then we got the title, just kind of like as an extender. And then we have two Ice J Ron. Ron is just, an amazing way to go into your level 10 Chen Ying or your level 10 Agrin. And then we got the Mullen Glacier. If you have five water monsters in your graveyard, you can special summon this card. And then you're going to be able to discard two random cards from your opponent's hand. Now, the only downside to this card is that if this face up card leaves the field, you have to skip the battle phase of your next turn. So you have to be very, very careful with that because sometimes it really sucks if you have game, but you cannot kill your opponent because you have to skip your battle phase. So just keep that in mind. All right, and then we have Pot of Avarice. This card is really amazing because we're constantly sending monsters to our graveyard. So it's a great way to recycle them. And then it, it allows us to draw two cards. Okay, then we have one for one. This is pretty much just to get our Atlantean Prince. Then we got one Triple Tactics Talent. Then we got one Mizuchi. This card right here can negate like just about any spell card so it can negate super poly it can negate dark Ula no more it can negate field spells really really great card and then we got two super poly as kind of like a going second board breaker and then we got two called by the grays for the maxis and then we got three infinite and permanent okay and then for the extra deck we got our super poly targets one mood dragon and one garura then we have one Coral Dragon. So this card is really great because you can discard a card and then you can target a card your opponent controls and you destroy it. And then if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can draw one card. So it's another great way to get cards to your hand because we're not running Max C. So drawing cards is really, really great. Okay, then we got our Pre Madonna. Very, very versatile and flexible card in this deck. Then we have our Spell and Trap Carnegie, our Right Dragite. Okay, then we have our Axel Starter Synchro Dragon allowing us to make our level 10 synchro plays. Okay, then we have one Baron de Floor, one Chain Ying, one Agrin, one Mermail Abyss Gaios. So this card is really amazing. So while this face-up card has an XC material, level five or higher water, level five or higher monsters cannot attack. Also once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one material from this card and then you can negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls that have less attack than this card until the end of this phase. So this card is really, really amazing. It can really shut down your opponents. All right, and then we have one Link Karibo. Then we have one Mermail Abyss Salacia, one Coral Anemone, one Apollo, and one Zelantis. All right, and that's the deck. So super, super fun deck to play obviously not very very top tier nothing like that you can struggle a little bit going second but if you want to take this into like master stuff like that you definitely should run the maxi package another card that you can run is like the Castira ogre because it's a level seven um free monster on the field that can special summon itself if you don't have any um monsters and stuff like that also you can consider running like more level seven xe cards like the big eye and stuff like that but overall, I just wanted to kind of keep it as pure as I could and as just water-based as I could. 
but um yeah so that's the deck that's the video thank you all so much let me know what you guys think about it if you are uh if you do play this deck how are you playing it what other cards are you run it really sucks that we don't have totally awesome in master do anymore like that card right there would make the deck a whole lot better as well but um yeah thank you all so much for sticking around with me please continue to join the rest of your day morning afternoon wherever you may be in the world kiwami games peace out <laughs>